What is up guys? It's your boy Perfect Catch Cacus and today we've got some brand spanking new Destiny 2 news courtesy of the Bungie weekly update that has just gone live revealing official information and so let's get started. And first things first, what's going on in game this week? Well, it's one of those few times in a year where there's literally everything going on because a brand new season, Season of the Deep, has just gone live. So we've got multiple new seasonal activities, a new story questline, a ton of new loot to get, and if you guys want to know about how the heck this season actually works, check out my ultimate guide I've done linked up above. But in addition to all of the new seasonal stuff, we also got some big evergreen changes, and certainly the biggest is the fact that the Last Wish raid now has craftable weapons, and they've updated the loot pool of these weapons, and guys, they're absolutely insane. I've unlocked some of them for crafting. For example, like I'll give you guys a little bit of a preview, the Nation of Beasts right here is the new best arc hand cannon for PvE in the entire game and it's not even close. Previously it was like the Cantata with rapid hit, timed payload, and this can get Dragonfly in the left column and you can combine that with Explosive or Volt Shot. Just insane! And all of the other uh, weapons from this raid have equally just bonkers god rolls, they're crazy. But moving on from there, another important addition was three new exotic armor pieces to the loot pools, so make sure you're paying attention to what the daily rotating lost sector is offering in terms of solo rewards. There's a new Titan exotic chess piece. Uh, I did do a video on that. It's linked up above. It's pretty crazy. Turns your barricades into like, grenades. Then there's also a warlock exotic helmet, which I did do, video coming eventually. And lastly, there's Hunter exotic gauntlets, which haven't been available from Lost Sectors just yet, so keep an eye on them. But guys, moving on from there outside of the game, yesterday Bungie made some absolutely earth-shattering announcements. And uh, I may have been grinding Destiny so hard I kind of forgot the fact that there was a PlayStation Showcase yesterday, so I just thought it was a random Wednesday. But Bungie revealed two huge things. First of all, they dropped the teaser trailer for the Final Shape expansion. This is likely to release uh, around the same time, like in February 2024, and the final shape will be the conclusion to the Light versus Darkness saga. So we will either beat or lose to the Witness, like that whole Witness versus Traveler, Light versus Dark thing will be finished in that expansion. And of course, you can see from the trailer, Cade 6 is back! in some way or another. He looks a little bit different. I did do a trailer breakdown. You can check that out linked up above, uh, but certainly extremely exciting that one of the most iconic characters of all time, even after they killed him off, everyone still loves Cade 6, uh, is coming back in some way or another. And we now have that important date of August 22nd for the Destiny Showcase, where we're going to learn so much more about not just the final shape, but if it's similar to other Destiny Showcases, we'll also learn about Season 22 and 23, as their themes will tie heavily into the upcoming expansion, The Final Shape. But then... We also got another massive announcement that has nothing to do with Destiny. Bungie's new game, Marathon, got a trailer. I'm going to play it in the background, guys. And this thing got some hugely positive reception and some hugely negative reception from the community. So we're going to talk about that. Now, first of all, visually, this thing looks incredible, judging by the trailer. We got this trailer, and then there was actually like an ARG puzzle. I think Scarrow was the one who solved it. That guy's on absolute goblin mode when it comes to this stuff. But then there was a marathon live stream, and if it got 7,777 viewers, uh, it would actually showcase something new, and that something new turned out to be the marathon, like, Vidox. So, very similar to Destiny expansion Vidox, it detailed a uh, bunch of features about Marathon from the dev team working on it. So we actually know quite a bit about this upcoming game. It is an extraction shooter. So think 
Tarkov or uh, the DMZ mode from the latest Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, right? Where you go in, it's PvE VP. So there's uh, PvE enemies you have to take down, but there's also other teams that you can team up with or kill. And then you're trying to find what they said was like relics that you can combine into like a prime relic that's even more powerful. And you're not only going in here and looting and getting all this stuff, but you're trying to extract with your loot uh, as well. And during this Vidoc, Bungie also announced that Marathon would get dedicated servers a dedicated security team that's going to work on getting hackers and cheaters and stuff out of that game, especially with an extraction shooter that's so important, uh, and also stuff like Evolving Seasons. Like, you're going to be able to, according to Bungie, unlock new areas that evolve during the season. There, there's actually going to be, like, a world's first team that might unlock a new area and have to figure out, like, a puzzle inside to unlock the area for everyone else and stuff like that. And so all of that stuff sounds fantastic for Marathon, but here we get into the controversy because there's a lot of Destiny 2 players that I've seen responding to these announcements saying, we'd like dedicated servers. We'd like a dedicated security team, right? So there is, again, a huge portion of the community that's kind of looking at this and saying, oh, this is where a lot of the resources that Bungie could have invested into Destiny instead went. Both in terms of financial resources and also talent, a lot of the people on the Marathon team used to be involved with Destiny PvP, which has clearly declined over the years. Ask anyone who plays Destiny PvP religiously, and they'll tell you it's not in a very good state right now. And so again, a lot of people are saying, huh, like what if you instead had invested those resources into making Destiny PvP as good as possible, or into larger, more interesting seasons and expansions instead of funneling those resources into a new game. And I think that's a fair argument to make. However, you've also got to understand from Bungie's perspective, they want to diversify. You have these extremely talented developers who've been working on Destiny for like a decade now. Because remember, there is so much work going on before even the first Destiny released. And so they want to try something new. They want to dip their toes into something new, a new project. If you just force these people to work on Destiny for their entire lives, they're just going to quit and get a job at a new studio to get that chance at something new instead. And I think you need to avoid that. Additionally, Bungie can learn and try things out with Marathon and apply them to Destiny. If the um, you know security team works really good at Marathon and they really get the hang of it, it would be a lot easier to apply to Destiny. If dedicated servers really work well for Marathon, it'd be easy to expand that infrastructure to Destiny. They can try out new weapons and things that maybe would be appropriate for Destiny, but learn things that will eventually be applied to Destiny. So I think there's a lot of positives from Bungie branching out into Marathon as well. At the end of the day, we'll have to wait and see, guys. Personally, I'm excited uh, to try out Marathon. I really don't think Destiny is going anywhere. Some people would argue that the quality has gone down. I, I don't exactly see it all the time. I mean, we get new weapon perks every single season, and that certainly wasn't the case for years and years and years. So, that's the big debate going on within the community right now. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section. However, it's time to move on from there, but tying into yesterday's big PlayStation announcement, there's actually a lot of PlayStation crossovers that went live in-game with Season of the Deep. First of all, we have these three armor sets. Uh, we have the like Kratos, God of War, Titan. We've got the Horizon Zero Dawn Hunter and the Ghosts of Tsushima Warlock. I think I'm getting those right. But also there's a Last of Us crossover as well. You can see there's like a fungal infected uh, Last of Us Sparrow, Ship, and Ghost Shell. And there's a new Gadgeteer emote inspired by Ratchet and Clank. Moving on from there, guys, Bungie is hosting a cosplay event. You can read it right here. Essentially, you can post your cosplay from now until the end of June. Use the hashtag Destiny2Cosplay and have a chance for it to be featured on the official Destiny Twitter account. Uh, after that, in case you're wondering, uh, Titans for sure clutched Guardian Games, uh, the right class one. What can I tell you, guys? And we have some more information uh, in terms of the top teams for charities and stuff like that right here. Now, moving on from there, guys, 
we have some important dates for Season of the Deep to keep in mind. So, uh, the new dungeon, as Bungie says, called Ghosts of the Deep is going to launch tomorrow at the Daily Reset. Now, the Season 21 Trials of Osiris also goes live tomorrow, so the same time as the dungeon. Then, the first Iron Banner starts next week on May 30th, and Grandmasters actually start early, Bungie says on June 13th, because we didn't have a power level climb. And then, also, Solstice, uh, the free live event for this season, is going live on July 18th. And so guys, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video, found it interesting, and if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at RickKakis, that is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.